everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's anti-armor trooper, the 1990 Salvo. Salvo makes his first comic book appearance in the old novel comic run of G.I. Joe at issue number 114. And makes his first cartoon appearance in the de-animated 1990 season 1 episode titled United We Stand. Before I get to the figure, I'd like to take a look at the file card first. Here we can take a good close-up look at Salvo's artwork, especially his unique helmet, which I'll discuss a bit later. But more importantly, his file name is Hassel David K. And that's based on a real person, Dave Hassel of Hasbro, a product designer who is more famous for implementing the finger flick missiles on G.I. Joe's at this time. So he is actually responsible for the accessories of for Salvo as well as for figures like Rampart and the Crimson Guard Immortal. And one other thing that's very interesting is that uh, this guy has kind of a contrary personality here as he has a distrust for high-tech weapons and yet his secondary military specialty is a wire-guided missile technician. That's a pretty, that's a pretty complex missile system, actually. First, I'll take a look at Salvo's accessories, starting with this famous backpack missile launcher. I'm just going to point out that he is not actually holding a grip, but holding the stock above it, as the hand on my figure is a little bit open, so it doesn't really grip the actual thinner grip portion uh, as well as it really should. But you do have to sort of angle it and fiddle around with it so that it sort of fits onto his shoulder and the sight kind of lines up with his head. It's, um, it's a little bit difficult to do that sometimes. Just taking it off the figure for a moment. This portion is also extremely fragile. Taking a good look around it. It's, well, well, it's basically a missile box with some very slight detail all around it. But on one end, you can see it does have a backpack peg. And it fits on the figure just like that. With the uh, missiles facing upwards. And speaking of the missiles, they do sort of pop out of the back. And there are five of these, all together. And with them popping out of the back, this thing has an unadvertised feature of being flick missiles. You can actually flick most of them out. And they're actually kind of loose, at least on mine. I don't think Salvo's backpack missile launcher is exactly based on a real-world man-portable device. It does, however, share characteristics with the 4-tube M202A1, with its boxy construction and small, simple eyepiece. This device was made famous by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Commando. Even the missiles are similar to the M74 rocket, one of the optional munitions for the M202A1. Next, we have his mine launcher which I have positioned sort of underslung, as it is on the artwork. You can actually uh, turn it around and it doesn't look so bad the other way. But I think it is meant to be underslung, to be honest. This, I don't think, is based on any real-world uh, military device. And as you can see, there are five of these removable mine pucks. They're fairly plain looking. And they all just slide out on this rail. And with them all out, you can see just a little bit more detail on the rails themselves. Very interesting. They didn't really have to do that. But one very interesting thing about the not only the mine launcher but the artwork itself 
is that it does show that this thing is a barrel with these things probably being shells but as you can see the shells are almost completely exposed almost like a clip so this might in fact be a 40 millimeter grenade launcher rather than some type of uh, firearm next we have what the contents list on the card calls a cache basically a big black briefcase it's well detailed Unfortunately, I don't know what it's a cache of, because it doesn't open. Unlike the 1983 Destro's attache case, or the 1986 Lifeline's medic bag, or even Bullhorn's rifle bag, from the same year even, this thing just doesn't open to reveal what secrets it holds. And last but not least, Salvo comes with a removable helmet, which is quite interesting in a few regards. First, it has a chin strap. First time we actually get that in a G.I. Joe figure. We also have a painted visor, which is something that Freefall, again from the same year, could have used on his removable helmet, but didn't get that. Also, you'll also notice on the card art that the helmet is actually has painted on camouflage which I'm really grateful that they didn't go with because it actually makes the helmet quite a bit busier than it really needs to be. One interesting thing to do when he's wearing his backpack is to make use of the outward stretched handle. So you can either put his helmet on there, just kind of store it on there, or you can even put the attache case on there as well. Like some type of bizarre coat rack. Without all those accessories, and they are very unique accessories and uh, very relatable to this one particular character, you would think that he would be kind of plain boring because all he's doing is wearing a t-shirt and some slacks. You can't even really see his boots. And yet, it actually kind of works for him. Hasbro actually made the slight details very distinctive to him. So he has that, the right of might, written right on his chest. I mean, it's not even like a typeset thing. It's just sort of scrawled on there, handwritten, like it's made of chalk. And while I would almost argue that that sort of, that sort of try-hardy thing, which I generally don't like, it actually works for this character. And then there's these ammo belts just wrapped around his legs. Now I know that some characters uh, they come with like ammo belts and things, even though they didn't come with machine guns. So they can be ammunition bearers to another figure. And that, that makes sense. That's a real world thing. But I'm not quite sure that you would wrap them around so distinctively around each leg like this. Unless you actually were supposed to have come with a machine gun. Which he clearly didn't. But perhaps in the design stage he might have. They're absolutely not the same sculpt that you uh, find on his mine launcher there. So... Yeah, these are completely a separate thing. And finally, there's that head sculpt, which around 1990, they were trying to make a lot of the characters younger looking, despite the fact that most of them had uh, quite high ranks, but that's another thing entirely. But here we have sort of a bald haired guy and he has kind of wrinkles on his forehead. Again, I think that's why I sort of buy this whole sort of aggressive logo on his t-shirt because honestly he looks the business, really. When I first saw him, all I can think of was how much he looks like Richard Makowitz of Future Weapons, which is very appropriate. On the toy shelves, Salvo took over from 1987 Fast Draw as the team's anti-armor specialist, although Fast Draw's Open missiles could also be used for aircraft as well. And before that, we had the 1985 Bazooka. And before him, we have the 1982 and 83 Zap. So, a team's anti-armor specialist is something that is very crucial to the G.I. Joe team if they have so many of them. I think you may already know who I would choose as Salvo's opposite number on the bad guy side. That would be the Iron Grenadier's 1990 Metalhead. 
course, he is an Iron Grandier and not a Cobra, but they did face off against each other in the comic books. However, if you want to take a look at a Cobra, a Cobra Trooper, in fact, and not an individual, the 1989 Heat Viper from just one year before is a perfect match. For some alternate uses for Salvo, and to play up his sort of desert theme, he doesn't actually look too bad as a driver for some desert themed vehicles such as this 1988 RPV. His backpack missile launcher even fits in the little spot meant for the radar robot. But I think Salvo would actually look quite a bit better with this light beige and dark brown as a driver of the 1988 Desert Fox six wheel drive in place of the accompanying driver, Skidmark. Here's something I found funny. This year the G.I. Joe Collector Club figure subscription service are making a salvo. What's he armed with? An M202A1. Due to the spring-loaded mechanism, there's only room for a single missile in the normally four-barreled launcher. What a terrible compromise. Looks like they need to hire Dave Hassel and bring back the flick fire concept. If you're looking for a salvo on the aftermarket, despite the fact that it's very easy to find it with all of his accessories complete, he is a somewhat popular figure for the 1990 releases, so you will find him with aftermarket values being a little bit higher than the norm for that year of figures. But one thing to look out for is the fact that the handle on his backpack missile launcher is often cracked off. It's just sort of out there and like I said you do have to position the figures hand around it and that could put a lot of pressure on that little thing. Of course you have five missiles and five mines on this thing so you have a lot of pieces to look for as well. And on top of that you also have the printed the right of might thing on his chest which is right on the uh, right on the front of his chest there and fairly easy to rub off. Personally, I don't find it all that, uh, all that a bad thing if it's just slightly worn because, well, like I said before, it's not typeset, it's sort of handwritten. And a bit of wear on it kind of makes it look like he's been through a few battles wearing that t-shirt at least. a good position but it can be done you just however on the Cobra side I would actually go one year back and take a look at the Cobra well that's all the time I have right now please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.